the lines, the weights, it's getting to be the point where going to the DMV is almost a punchline in a joke. Joining us this morning is State Assemblyman Phil Ting, who sits on the Transportation Committee up in Sacramento. Lawmakers taking a look at this. Okay, what is going on with the lines and this new ID and the backups and the headaches and all that stuff at the DMV? Well, real ID is being implemented. Everybody who wants to fly with a driver's license by the, this October 2020 is going to need a real ID. It's taken twice as long to process people. And then the problem is, is you and I, we could have uh, renewed by mail. Now we have to actually go into the DMV with our birth certificates or our passports to prove we are who we are. And it take, it's taking twice as long with a lot more people. So the whole state of California, at least the drivers, have to go in and physically show up and change their license. Now look at those lines out there. They didn't just happen overnight. I was at the DMV last year and those lines were there. This has been an ongoing problem. What tipped it over the edge and all of a sudden got somebody to pay attention? Well, it is it is real ID because I was there a couple years ago on Fell Street. You didn't have these people going out the door. I was there a couple weeks ago getting my real ID and the line was around the corner. It looked like someone was waiting for a rock concert. Okay, when you get there, you know, we are sitting there and there's rules. You can't bring in drinks, you can't bring in food. You, sometimes the waits are for hours. Yes. Okay, and uh, one of the questions people said is, well, why aren't we just open more and having more staff? For a while there, they were open on Saturdays and some offices closed on Saturdays. What's going on there? Well, well that's what happened. So we opened on Saturdays. We have about 60 offices open on Saturdays. That's new. Uh, they have a new texting system. They're starting to pilot today in some of the offices so that you, you go in, you check in, you get a text when it's there. The Fell Street office is great. There's a coffee shop across, uh, there's a coffee shop across the street. The Daily City uh, DMV where I was yesterday, they got a donut shop across the street. People can go hang out there. Yeah, but if you missed your number while you were hanging out, boom, you're back at the end of the line. No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm assuming that whenever you get back, they'll take you. Okay, on this, the real ID switch over, we saw it coming, or we should have seen it coming. The driver's license for undocumented, mm -hmm. which is also added to mm -hmm. the lines, we passed that, we should have seen it coming. Mm -hmm. Now we even registered a vote at the DMV. You're putting a lot on them. Now, is this a case of where they were underfunded or they just didn't bother to spend the money or they didn't ha What happened here? With Real ID, it's taking twice as long as they thought to process all the paperwork. So they don't, I don't think they asked for enough positions in the budget. In the budget, we gave them all the positions they asked for. And again, DMV brings in fees. So they're a self-supporting agency. They're not an agency that is reliant on our general fund. So again, all the fees that they're charging you and me when we're paying for driver's licenses or IDs, it funds the staffing of the agency. So there's no reason to have all these long lines. So what do you think it was? Just bureaucratic budgeting where they, you know, they don't go to the max and, and, and get things done? They, they actually estimated the number of people coming in correctly. They just didn't know how much time it was going to take. And so until, until a system goes online and you're typing out all the data, you don't really know. Now that we know. Sounds so typical. It sounds so, okay, is it going to get any better? We've only got a couple seconds. Are we Ab absolutely. We have to make it better. They're going to implement technology. They're going to start uh, moving people out of, uh, out of the front into, into the office, and we're going to make sure that they properly staff. Okay. So we hold you to that. Absolutely. How soon are we going to be able to go down there and get in and out within a half hour? Uh, within an hour. Uh, the director said lines should be returning more to normal by the end of the year. Okay, you've got that. State Assemblyman Phil Tang. One of the effects of California's wildfires is the question of who's liable. And under current California law, when a utility like PG&E takes over a stretch of land for utility wires, they get it and in return, they're liable. Joining us this morning is State Assemblyman Phil Ting, who is a part of this in huge debate going on in Sacramento right now about whether that should continue or not. If utilities like PG&E should be responsible for fire damage. Well, absolutely, there's no, there's no question. The question is, is the level of responsibility. Right now, if anything happens on their, on their wires, whether you or I cause it or the weather causes it, they're completely liable whether they were negligent or not. So I think they're arguing they should really be 100% liable only if they're negligent or the liability should be sort of unlimited, but they want more limited liability if it wasn't their fault. Okay, so it becomes a question of to the degree of fault. Correct. Okay, if they lay the lines and 
there's been incidents in the last fires in recent years where there's been questions raised and 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 mm -hmm. and, and, and charges leveled right. about PG and E or Absolutely. at least uh, about the fact that they their sparks right. cr triggered this. Absolutely. Should they be liable for that? Well, in, in a number of consumer groups, they're very concerned because in San Diego, what happened is after they had a number of fire incidents, when they realized the level of liability, they started aggressively cutting down trees. There's been concern that if you don't put the liability over them, they're not going to aggressively trim the trees, keep them away from the lines. Now, we had this same sort of issue with underground pipeline safety after the San Bruno blast. Right. Are you actually taking care of it that's or right. are you diverting the funds? And I think that that's the big question, right? Now, they're saying they've set aside two and a half billion dollars to settle all of last year's settlements, not talking this year, last year. And, the, and they feel like if they don't get any kind of liability relief, they're going to be close to bankruptcy. We're trying to figure out really where, where okay, the Okay, there's also is. talk of a, a, a ratepayer bond where we as ratepayers would pay back or we would cover the losses. Is that it? Uh, I haven't heard that, but okay. what I have heard is they're at, they are asking to bill ratepayers some of this liability. You know, the concern is whether or not they're going to go bankrupt. I, I know that some people in San Francisco would cheer that. I think that personally would be a disaster because at the end of the day, all the people happy about PG&E going bankrupt would be unhappy when the power is not being delivered. Or when they are, if it's a public utility and then they are own the utility and they're liable for the same damages, right? It wouldn't change that. Well, the question is, is if PG&E went bankrupt, who would run the utility? Would it be the state? Would it be some other agency? I think the alternative would be much worse. Okay. In that regard, though, if part of this issue is, like it or not, we are building these homes or these wildfires are getting closer and it's becoming, as Jerry, the governor says, the new normal. Absolutely. So if you're going to hold the utilities liable for the houses mm -hmm. in the lake country or even if a fire shoots into Santa Rosa, would they have the option then of saying, well, we're not putting wires in there? Right. I think that, that's the question, right? Are you going to make them put those wires in there? We just had a new fire start in Fairfield in Vacaville. So, so again, the, this is like a suburb. This is not some remote, you know, rural area. This is a suburb, a part of the Bay Area. Yeah, but 20 years ago, it was it was it was, it was, it was far land. That's right. right. That's and right. now we're building on it. Yes. And then if something happens, we're going to have. We're going to wind up paying for it. Right. I mean, the ratepayers wind up paying for it one way or the other, right? Yeah. Maybe, well, or the I shareholders. Mean, it's, going to, it's going to be a mix, but ultimately, they, they make their money on us. Well, that's a nice... Okay, yes, they make the money on us, and we pay, and somebody else pays, and then they charge us. Whatever the case, it's got about a month to figure this out, or it goes get booted to next year, right? Less than a month, end of August. All right.